Hello, it's Tracy from Salem again, and I'm here to talk about a new project I'm working on. Um, it didn't take too long to become pretty obsessed, <laughs> so uh, we'll see how it goes. And <clears throat> in part, it's based off of a project I did a couple of videos ago where I did um, kind of a patchwork background with lots of stitching and a hair and a moon. And that came from the book Expressive Stitches. Um, and I've been wanting to try more versions of that. So that's kind of been rattling around in my head. And then also I've been watching way too many Ariane Zercher uh, videos. Um, so if you like to stitch and you haven't seen Ariane Zercher, you should absolutely check out her YouTube channel. She's amazing. And um, so... Yeah, I've been, <laughs> I've been watching a lot of her videos and so have been inspired by her work as well. Um, I'm not really wanting to have uh, like a, um, a, a particular image. Uh, it's really more of an abstract piece. And it's really, again, it's just to like be pushing myself to be thinking outside the box to just try to think differently than I have previously. Um, and to work differently than I have previously. Um, so yeah, so it started maybe last weekend, I guess. Well, a couple weeks ago, I had gotten a, uh, tie dye kit from Michael's or Amazon or one of those. I know I've seen it both places. Um, and so the camera just won't stop shaking because it's attached to the side of my chair. That's why. So, uh, yeah, so I got the tie dye kit and a couple weeks ago I did a bunch of dyeing and I've shown that on a previous video and showed a project that I uh, tried out, um, with those pe with some of those pieces. Um, and so I got out my book, Expressive Stitches again by Jan Dowson that I talked about in a couple videos ago and kind of looked at the way she went about dyeing her materials uh, which was um, not just sort of pure colors, but putting a lot of colors into the into the one bowl with the material. Um, so I wanted to try that. So I came out with some really, really just lovely, lovely things. Um, and some of these materials are the materials that I got last weekend when I was in the Cape and the library had the... Um, like big sale where they where lots of people drop off their excess stuff. And um, I got that big, beautiful pink wool, uh, like two yards of beautiful pink wool um, that I showed in a previous video. Um, so I did some dyeing, as you can see, I've already cut some to use it. <laughs> um, this is going over here. And uh, so, yeah, so that was super fun to just try it. And I have to say that my main takeaway is I really need a studio. I gotta have a studio. It's, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, so so some lovely pieces. I love this purple. Look at this purple. Oh, it's so pretty. Uh, and then I dyed up some of that pink wool um, in a variety of ways. I love, obviously, this one's probably my favorite. <laughs> um, you're probably getting to know my tastes by now. This one looks just pretty dirty, so it's gonna have to get cut up <laughs> and used in patches. Um, or have a lot of stitching on it. Um, this one, the green didn't really take. I mean, it's not that bright pink, um, but it's kind of just a dull pink instead of green. And here's another purple. Can you tell what my favorite colors are yet? I'm sure if you've been watching a while, you can probably tell. So anyway, that was, and also I was inspired by uh, the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, which I'm doing. And in the March block, we were supposed to use some background of, um, reclaimed fabric or vintage fabric. So I had in my head this um, piece that's from my grandmother. This is obviously the backside of it. Um, but that was part of that dyeing experiment. And you can see some really lovely like green and blue and turquoise. And I think it just came out beautifully. Um, and I'll show you the front side in a minute. Uh, but so then, then the idea was uh, if you watch any Ariane Zerscher, you see that she kind of collages and then she stitches and, you know, all the things. So that was the idea is to like try some collage. Um, I also did a bunch of um, 
the cheesecloth. Uh, so that has some variety in there. And um, this is from a previous one where I just did the, like pure, pure color. Um, so I dyed a bunch of cheesecloth as well. Um, and so then I, as you saw, some of that fabric was already cut. And so I cut some fabric, I cut some cheesecloth and I collaged it on. Um, and now I've been just acquiring, uh, you know, kind of building up my stock of what else is going to go on there. Um, I just freaking love this so much. This is from Artistic Artifacts. Um, and this is some of that harem cloth that I have mentioned many times, which you get at Dharma Trading Post and which um, Jude Hill taught me about. Um, and that's from that dye. Um, I was about to say dye job. I mean, you know, I guess that's what it is. And then I've just been collecting. Here's some old, um, beautiful um, skeins of merino that I knitted a um, cowl with and but have lots left over um here's some uh alpaca wool that my mom brought back from um uh, peru and um ha she had a couple skeins of it and then in the end just could just did not want to knit with it so i was like well let me try stitching with it um Here's a, you know, one of these kind of big rainbow things that you get again at Michael's. It's like one of these massive um, balls that changes color. So I'm just kind of unwinding it in, in chunks. You know, this will be a chunk and this will be a chunk and this will be a chunk so that I can use it in stitching. Isn't that just, I mean, come on, look at those colors. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Uh, and then I've just been going through my um, my stash, uh, as you can see a theme here, it's definitely, there's definitely a theme which you'll kind of see, uh, but I'm just getting all kinds of, all different kinds. Um, I'm, I, I got rid of, as you can see, uh, um, I'm getting the arthritis and I really can't knit anymore. It's just too uncomfortable. To knit and so I gave away a lot of my yarns but then I kept a lot of them that I thought well let me try stitching with some of these right or these guys that could be couched um I don't even know where I got this but like oh I'm sure it must be Michael's right this looks like a Michael's thing um but look when you unravel it right I mean there's some serious possibilities there uh and then some other like this my mom gave this to me she just wasn't using it and then I've got some eyelash lace here who knows if that'll go on there it's a little it's a little too much it might need some trimming <laughs> um some other things to couch with I'm looking forward to trying this out that's very cool um you know this is old knitting yarn um these are a pair of socks that I have now <laughs> um and this thing um which it says <laughs> glitz knits and she just made a headband out of it uh but i feel like there's um, so many possibilities in here and it, you can see this is like this is the this is the piece of thread so i got my i got all my things all my things here um a couple pops of satiny goodness um Again, more sock yarn, probably the same sock yarn. Anyway, lots lots of things have been convened for this experiment. Um, so this is the piece so far. Um, not be able to get the whole thing on the phone. Right, so you can see that I've, um, I kind of just did uh, random invisible stitches, uh, which is what Jude Hill calls them, but it's just basting essentially. Um, but I just did them randomly and not near the edges because I hadn't decided yet if I was going to tack down the edges or not. A couple places I tried, you know, oh, what happens if I try to pucker it here? 
Um, no, but I haven't done too much. And then, so I just, I just tacked down with invis invisible stitches the pieces first that I, the, the pieces of, and so you can see these are the materials that I dyed here and here. Get on the camera, Tracy, or no one will watch your YouTubes. And here's some of the um, cheesecloth uh, that I that I put on here uh, that I dyed. Um, and then I started to just do some stitching. I, I really had no idea where it was going. When I very first put on just these strips of material, wow, it was super ugly. And I was like, wow, what are you doing? And oh, by the way, this beautiful... Look at that. Isn't that lovely? This beautiful cloth that you got from your grandmother that you dyed. Maybe you've just completely ruined it by um, stitching on random pieces of material. Um, so you better figure out some way to save this now. Uh, so then I just started doing some stitches. So I really wanted to learn the oyster stitch. I, that's what I spent yesterday doing is learning the oyster stitch a terrific video by somebody in the Roxy's Journal Creation group whose name I think is Kathleen Sudby or Sudbury. I'm so sorry if I'm getting that wrong, Kathleen. I do apologize. Um, so I'll try to link in the description below her page because she's in the Roxy's group and she does she's doing a terrific stitch st series on her YouTube channel. Um, which is super fun. And I have tried for so long to learn how to make the oyster stitch from a book and I just could not do it. But Kathleen has a great tutorial. And so then I was like, oyster stitch crazy, as you can see. Wow, my neighbors are, I don't know if you can hear that. My neighbors are coming downstairs. They must have six bags of massive luggage because it's, they're like crashing down the stairs. Um, so... And I was doing it using this um, alpaca from my mom. And what you can see is like w wicked, lace thin. Um, if I, I got it on the camera, lace thin. So um, it's great for stitching. And what I love about it, so I used it here for some fly stitch. And I love the way the place, the place as it goes into, you know, when it goes through the fabric, the fuzz on it kind of collects collects there and makes like a darker uh, aqua. Um, and so then it kind of becomes tonal, which is uh, just fantastic. I, I am loving and the oak oh, feels fantastic. I mean, I almost feel like I might stitch the entire thing in that alpaca. Um, but, and so then I was like, well, what am I gonna do about these um, strips? Uh, they need to get, now that I've got the, the cheesecloth on there and I'm starting to get a feel for it, I need to decide, am I going to leave them rough or am I going to um, hem them? Um, so this one I did hem, not, not very well. I should have just picked a darker thread um, so, that you, so that it was less visible. And then, I, as I said, I made some little puckers, just experimenting. So now I'm just experimenting. Now I'm just like... Okay, now I feel like um, I kind of have a theme or an idea of the theme of this piece or the feel. I, theme is not the right word. The feeling of it. I have the feeling of it. And so now I'm just going to start doing things. Um, and I'm going to pay less attention to like the overall. Um, so, so yeah, so I made, I, I, I tacked that one now. But then this one, I decided, no, I'm going to leave this one a rough edge. So I just did a back stitch. Um, oh, I hit the camera again. I'm just going to do a back stitch, um, which I did, and then and then carry it on. So, I mean, obviously, I feel like oh, and I couched down this this stuff, uh, which I believe was an Amazon purchase. Um, but it's just this great kind of. Uh, I think it's just wrapped sari, right? Sari silk, and they've just wrapped it into a thread. Um, and I, I think the purpose of this is to is to knit with it or to or whatever. Um, but I did some couching, um, 
At the moment, it's just invisible couching, but I'm sure I will go back in with stitches. But now I kind of, now I'm starting to get the feel of like, you know, obviously water, um, kind of rivers or inlets. Um, and so now I feel like, uh, now I feel like I have a place to go. Um, that I have an idea in my head. Not to, for sure, not to create a scene of rivers and inlets that looks realistic or anything like that but that that's just the mood mood that's the word mood anyway that's a lot out of me that's what I'm up to um so go watch Ariane Zercher Zercher and go watch um Kathleen uh, well I, I I don't know if it's Sudby or Sudbury but I will put a link to her YouTube in the description below um and I hope that those folks watching this who are in the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery are having a great time. We're all eagerly anticipating the April prompts, um, which hopefully will come this weekend, but maybe not till next weekend. Hard to say, but I can tell people in the group are already <laughs> like, all right, let's go. Um, so we're, we're eagerly awaiting those prompts. And in the meantime, I am just going to try to have a lot of fun and, and use my stitches. Use my stitches. That's my goal here. All right. Thanks for joining me. Bye.